Hi kids, and welcome to Pladly Tales. I'm Rob the Tomato. And I'm Gary the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. Today our question comes from Emma Stone from Los Angeles, Oklahoma. She writes, Dear Bob and Larry, I'm afraid of dying. What do I do? Mm, that's a very tough question. Do you think that maybe we should demonstrate to her that maybe dying isn't really that scary? That's a good idea, Gary. Come on, let's do it! Veggie Tales, Veggie Tales, Veggie Tales. Hey, you, right there. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you, right there. Yep. Hi, how's it going? You've heard of VeggieTales, haven't you? It's a popular children's television series created by Phil Vischer that features talking vegetables. They reenact stories from the Bible as well as teach general Christian principles like love your neighbor and forgive mean people and don't commit adultery. I grew up on VeggieTales and still have fond memories of both watching and collecting every episode as they were released. I have the Larry Boy one. As well as getting as much merchandise as I could get my grubby little hands on, which included some video games. There were a handful of VeggieTales video games, most of which were released at the height of its popularity in the early 2000s. Today, we're going to be looking at the very first VeggieTales PC game. I grew up with this game, and I'm really excited to see if it's aged well or not. The Mystery of Veggie Island released on September 15th, 2002. It was developed by Imagine Engine and published by ValueSoft. It's a point-and-click adventure game geared toward children, in a similar vein as the Humongous Entertainment series. First, we have to pick a name for our save file, and I went with the most creative name I could think of. There's a settings menu that lets you adjust the volume for both voices and music. There's also a parental control section where you can set a virtual egg timer to ensure that your child is only able to play the game for five minutes, which is quite the useful feature. All right, I set the parental control for five minutes, so I hope you enjoy playing. I will thank you, Father. Yoshi, what's going on? How are you still playing? It's been like over five minutes. I had the parental controls and disabled the egg timer so I can play for ten- Why, you little- the game starts and we're greeted with a cutscene showing Bob and Larry taking a bunch of children to an island. They set up camp on the island while unbeknownst to them, their canoe floats away into the ocean. Oh no! Wait a minute, you're telling me that a cucumber with zero arms managed to row a canoe with four other passengers to an island in the middle of the ocean? Bro must be ripped! The gang sets up camp and Bob tells the kids to earn some merit badges around the island. And for some reason, the audio glitched out here. Welcome to Veggie Island, everybody! You got a whole weekend to earn your three Cub Sprout merit badges! I'm pretty sure it's a compatibility issue, considering this game released 20 years ago, but the only time the audio had this issue was during the intro and ending cutscenes. It's so crazy that a video game released for Windows 95 slash 98 slash XP wouldn't be completely compatible with a Windows 10 computer. Wow! Right off the bat, I think the old overall presentation of the game is pretty great. Despite the compressed look of the FMV cutscenes and rare audio hiccups, the graphics look very faithful to the style of the VeggieTales series. The animation isn't bad either, although I do have a slight issue with one of the small quirks of the animation. The characters in the game all have idle animations while they're not actively doing anything, but sometimes they're just motionless with a blank, eerie stare. Even Junior, the central protagonist of the game whom we control, just kind of stares off into the void most of the time without blinking. Honestly, it's more of an observational nitpick, but it's definitely something that almost broke my immersion in this video game with talking vegetables. I need a life. One last thing I'll touch on before getting back to the story and gameplay is the soundtrack, because it's surprisingly pretty great. Kind of. The songs that are here are all perfectly suited to fit the vibe of this game. You've got the outdoor theme which has a fun, cozy campfire sound to it. The indoor theme has a mysterious, eerie, yet not creepy tone. And the minigame theme has a fun, bouncy, energetic vibe to it while retaining the campfire feel. Alright, so let's do a quick count. That was one, two, three songs.
And that's the soundtrack. While technically there are more songs in the game, and we'll get to those later, those three tracks are all you're going to be hearing for most of the game. While I do wish there were a couple more tracks here, I really do like the background tracks in this game and feel like they fit the mood perfectly. Okay, I know I said that was the last thing I was going to say before getting back to the story and the gameplay, but I have another nitpick, so let me just get it out of the way. This is a point and click adventure game, so in typical fashion, you'll have to point around the screen to click on things or move to different areas. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, every time you transition between between scenes, the game freezes for about 2-5 to five seconds to load the new area. Not only that, the music cuts out during this transition and starts over even if the new area shares the same song as the previous. So most of the time you'll be hearing the first 10 seconds of the song over and over as you move from scene to scene. I'm done nitpicking the little quirks of this game for now, so let's get on with nitpicking the story and gameplay. Junior has to earn three Cub Sprout marriage Marriage badge. <laughs> He's gotta get married. Junior's gotta get married. Junior has to earn three Cub Sprout merit badges to progress the story of the game and gain access to new areas of the island. He unlocks each of them by completing a mini game. The first is where you shoot squirrels with explosive acorns. As fun as that sounds, Junior is actually just giving the squirrels their dinner and doing a good deed. Feed enough squirrels and we've unlocked the aiming badge. The next minigame is the famous tree climbing minigame that every video game has. This is the best climbing tree I've ever seen! You click on the next branch up so Junior can climb the tree. This minigame gives us the climbing badge and it seems pretty easy. However, there are squirrels in this tree and unlike the friendly squirrels in the previous minigame, these squirrels are out for blood and will throw acorns at Junior to try and knock him off the tree. Luckily for me, I'm a cool gamer and I was able to climb the the tree without getting knocked off even once. I'll have to add that to my resume. So it says here that you climbed a big tree in a children's video game? Yeah, I did that. You're hired. Yeah! So, how do you feel about committing tax fraud? When you reach the top of the best climbing tree I've ever seen, you meet this funny guy. Hi, my name's Socrates. Well, that's a funny name for a cat. Socrates gives us a key that'll probably come in handy later, then picks Junior up and gives him a ride back to the path. Man, this Socrates dog must be ripped. The final minigame in this section is the one where you have to chase the frogs around on these little lily pads. You gotta get them on this big lily pad so that this pea guy can identify them. That's a genuine win! Frog, because he's bald. Well, look who's talking. He gives us a flint rock for our fire badge, and now we'll go talk to Bob about collecting these badges. Our badges go in the Cub Sprout guidebook, which we can view at any time from the knapsack Junior carries around. There's some fun little info in this book and some helpful hints for the kiddos that are struggling to figure out what to do next in the game, but I don't need any of those hints. I've already unlocked them all, and I'm smarter than this silly baby game. It's almost like I played this game countless times as a kid and thus knew pretty much exactly how to progress through the game as an adult, as well as having an overall better grasp on basic problem-solving issues. Also, you can print stuff out from the book. I just thought that was cool. After Bob is done running his mouth, Larry runs up and tells Bob that he didn't tie the canoe securely enough, and it floated away. We're all stuck on Veggie Island, and well, it's kind of my fault. I thought if I used a super knot when I tied that canoe to that twig, I could get a merit badge for it. And well, it turned out to be not so super. Um, so... That's a lie. We literally see in the intro cutscene that Larry didn't even attempt to tie the canoe down to anything, and then it floated away. Come on, Larry, haven't you seen the fib from outer space? Lying is evil and bad. Why are you trying to gaslight your audience of actual babies? Larry. After Larry's giant screw up, it's up to Junior to find another way off the island, and thus the mystery of Veggie Island truly begins. Junior finds a speedboat, but when Orange Girl says they should just take it, Junior does the admirable thing and says that would be stealing. We just can't take it. We need to find the owner and see if he'll give us a ride off the island. <laughs> I love how Junior is just the moral arbiter in this game. You've got Pathological Liar over here and Thief Child over here, plus Lazy Bob just sits by the campfire doing nothing, not to mention the bald phobic I think there's quite a bit of moral ambiguity we could unpack from these characterizations, but I don't feel like it. Let's just leave the morality questions this game presents for another time. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Marty. The part of the show where Marty sings a silly song. Hi, I'm Marty McJenkins, and this song goes out to all of the armies in the whole world, especially probably America, because of my shirt. <sighs> Micah, roll your boat ashore. Hallelujah. Micah, roll your boat ashore. Hallelujah. 
Got a Montana Hallelujah Star Trek in darkness For the stripes are on the land And the frogs are still there I'm trying to see if I can break it it's not, it's not, it's not breaking. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you for coming, thank you, all of you, thank you so much. Make sure you head down to Martin B. Jacobs Supply House Chain Store. We have a brand new deal today, it's Boboa. Let's buy one, buy one again. A great, great deal, guys. Make sure you buy all the stuff at Martin B. Jacobs Store. Go ahead, yeah, everyone, go to Martin B. Jacobs Supply Chain House Store place. Yeah. Larry's Big Screw-Up unlocks a new minigame by the beach where you have to fish for items that fell out of the canoe while these greedy ducks get in your way. In order to beat this minigame, you have to collect six special items, including a hairbrush and a tire. Wait, why did they bring a tire to an island? I kind of really hate the sound effect for the fishing pole in this minigame. Overall, this minigame isn't half bad. The only thing that would make it better is if Larry would do something to help get rid of those obnoxious ducks. Those greedy ducks. One last thing of note in this minigame, if you're able to catch this guitar, Sweet ukulele! I mean ukulele, you unlock a secret bonus area where you can hear Larry sing some silly songs. Around the island, there's a couple secrets you can find to unlock more of the silly songs. For example, clicking all three of these butterflies unlocks one. Here's a sample of what the silly songs sound like. Frogs! Thank you, Larry. Now we've reached a cliff, which was inaccessible until Junior collected the climbing badge. It's essentially the same as the Best climbing tree I've ever seen! But this time, you have to be careful which rocks you jump on because because some of them immediately crumble under Junior, sending him falling to the ground. You also have to dodge some falling pebbles, and by dodge I mean you can't even see them coming, so dodging them is impossible, and sometimes even when you don't touch them, they still send you falling back to the ground. Ouch! Ah, ouch! Ah, ouch! One ouch! I can climb this! Okay, so then stop falling, Junior! Eventually I made it to the top, and uh-oh, I can't go in the cave because it's too dark. If only I had something in my knapsack that would help. Maybe something in your knapsack would help! Oh yeah, thanks, Rat! Junior enters the spooky cave and can either go left or right. To the left is a pirate ship, but to get to the ship... Rap? You'll need some rope, I think. Okay, monkey, you don't have to keep spelling out every last thing I need to progress in the game, okay? I get it, you're a talking ferret, but the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. That is my favorite quote that John Luke Picard said in Star Trek. So we can't do anything to the left yet, so what's to the right? Well, there's a bunch of stalagmites and stalactites in the way, which Junior quickly gets rid of with his slingshot. There's a door on the other side, which leads to... You gotta find the key! Oh... Do you mean the key you gave me when I climbed up the tree, which also gave me the ability to climb up to this area of the game, Mr. Panda? So just to be clear, this game requires you to collect the three badges, climbing, aiming, and fire, to even progress to this point in the game. You need the climbing badge to climb up the cliff, you need the fire badge and flint rock from P to light the lamp to enter the cave, and you need the aiming badge to get rid of the stuff blocking the door. So why do you need a key, which again you get from climbing the tree, which gets you the climbing badge? I really need to stop overthinking this game. Maybe I should see a therapist. So, what's on your mind? So, in this game, you get like three badges, right? And you gotta get all three badges before you can progress to this other part of the game. And you need to get... The climbing badge is like the most important one. Because you have to climb the cliff, you have to click each rock, right? And you get to the top, right? But in order to actually get so then, to the climbing badge, and the climbing badge, you have to get all three badges, badges and the tree. which includes and then you have to the fire, 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 fire badge. Like it's just been keeping me up at night. I can't... I can't sleep. Can't rest. I just can't get it out of my head. Can you help me? No. Get out. Through the door is what looks like a laundry room, and there's another door that's blocked by a box. Junior moves the box and it's blocked. Yeah, it is blocked. But Junior moves the box. It's blocked. Exactly. There is a box in the way. That's why you need to move the box. It's blocked. Okay, fine. You know what? How about we wake up a sleeping mouse from his nap and force him to move the box since you're incapable of moving it yourself? Junior. There's also a trap door in this room that takes you back to this tree, which is a nice way of offering a checkpoint to the players so they don't have to climb back up the cliff every time they want to come back to this area. Good game design, VeggieTales! We leave the laundry room and find a big zucchini guy burying a corpse in his front yard. I'm Mr. Neza. Excuse me, 
Mr. Nezer is burying a corpse in his front yard. And he seems pretty chill considering Junior is trespassing on his private island. Actually, it turns out it's not even his island. It's his great, 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 great granddaddy's island. And he's here looking for a secret buried treasure. Unfortunately, he was only able to find one piece of the treasure map. And when Junior asks the nice man if he can give them a ride home on his speedboat, Nezer says Junior has to find the rest of the treasure map first. Junior sets off to search for the rest of the treasure map. This is when the mystery of Veggie Island truly begins. Wait a minute, haven't I said that before? Now we can go into the big mansion to find pieces of the map in there, as well as search this other area outside. My search began in the house, and I immediately found one in this umbrella, then headed upstairs. To get to the other side of this room, you've got to copy the pattern the floor lights up for some reason, and now we're in this observatory type room. There's a big telescope that does nothing but move a tiny bit, a TV that plays classic VeggieTales songs in black and white, and a piece of the treasure map in this drawer. There's also a phone that Junior could probably use to call the Coast Guard to get them off the island since they're being held hostage by a freaking zucchini, but let's just let's just ignore that phone. That doesn't exist. That's not in the game. Back to the first floor, there's another piece of the map in this library room, and if you click the shield on the suit of armor, you unlock a secret passage to another room. Also, there's an alligator here, and I spent way too much time clicking on him because I kind of like the sound he made. Upstairs in the secret room, there's a puzzle where you have to fit all these little shapes into this big shape. And I'm so smart, I figured it out super quick. You better turn that light off, kid! Okay, mom. Going outside into the front yard, I found a gopher mom who needs help getting her children back. You throw her children at her across a walkway of zooming turtles, and it's kind of violent. There's this rabbit chasing game that's similar to the frog chasing game from earlier, but this time it's diagonal, ooh. There's a locked shed next to Gopher Mom and I found the key by accident while just clicking around aimlessly. Inside there's a rope. Hmm, I wonder what the rope could be for. You'll need some rope, I think. Oh yeah, that silly ghost said I needed rope to get on the pirate ship and he was right, Wee! Inside the pirate ship, there's another one of those shape puzzles that took zero seconds for me to figure out because I'm very smart. And with that, we have all the pieces of the map. Junior gives the full treasure map to Nezer, and that stupid zucchini man betrays Junior and says he won't actually take them home. Oh no, he's a villain, what a big twist, ah! But then he falls down the hole and gets dead. Junior calls the Coast Guard on the phone, like I said he should do earlier, and they get off the island, and they are safe now. They all went to McDonald's the next morning to get chicken biscuits, but unfortunately the employees said that they did not have those anymore. The veggies were all very sad and cried about why McDonald's got rid of their only good breakfast item. Please McDonald's bring back the chicken biscuit, we need it to come back. What actually happened is that Junior, of course, decides to rescue Mr. Nezer, despite him stabbing Junior in the back. There's one last puzzle, and it's one of the ones with the little shapes. You have to fit in the one big shape, and you have to do it three times in a row for some reason. Once you finish the puzzles, Junior gets sucked up into the machine that gets mangled to pieces, and he gets dead. Okay, fine, I made that joke twice now, I promise I'll stop. Junior saves Mr. Nezer, and everyone gathers around to see what's in the treasure, since apparently that is still more important than our veggie friends getting off the island. The treasure is opened, and it's... A plunger. Larry, not having any clue what this plunger could do, decides to press down on it. There is an explosion, but it's only big enough to open a hole in the side of the cliff, letting out the huge pirate ship and giving our veggie friends a way to go home in style. That is the true pacifist ending. You earned all your badges, but even more importantly, you learned what it means to be a real cub sprout. Yes, I did. I learned that lying is okay as long as you're an adult and you feign stupidity. And that was the mystery of Veggie Island and it did not age very well. <laughs> the sluggish load times, the vacant lifeless stares from the characters, and compatibility issues all took away from the highlights of this game. There were also a couple silly design flaws in the puzzles, but I chose to look past those. Honestly, when I was a dumb little baby, I remember finding this game really challenging and even needed help from my mom and brother for some of the puzzles later on in the game. So while as a cynical adult who still plays games for children, I found the game to be very easy. But for the intended audience, I think the challenge is at the right level, if not perhaps a bit too vague at times and a little too on the nose at others. Maybe something in your knapsack would help. You'll need some rope, I think. You gotta find the key. Bird. I'm glad our veggie friends safely got off the island and that everybody got a happy ending. Ah!
Gladly was never heard from or seen again. Some say they can still hear his screams as he was ripped into pieces. We will always treasure all of his funny moments within our hearts, like when he played Fortnite, when he pretended to be a Paw Patrol mega fan, when he was haunted by a doll for a couple of months, when he committed tax fraud, and when he... Thank you.